Hey, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today I will be filming a spring TBR. So I just went through my bookshelf and I picked out some books that I really hope I can get to sometime this spring and I just wanted to go ahead and show you what those books are. The first book is Gallant by V.E. Schwab and I'm just really excited to read this book because I loved The Invisible Life of Audie LaRue and I'm just excited to read another book by her. Let's go ahead and read what it's about. All her life, Olivia Pryor has wondered who she truly is and where she belongs. Her only clue is a slim, battered journal, her mother's journal, full of entries that seem to show that she was unraveling in drawings that look like blots of ink. Until Olivia notices a hand, a door, a bloom, a skull. Then a letter beckons Olivia home, to Gallant, the one place her mother's journal warns her never to go. Olivia goes anyways. What she finds is her last living relative and her family's manor. A manor with a ballroom, and a sitting room, and a study, and a sprawling, vibrant garden, and the crumbling ruin of a garden wall with an iron door. A door she must never open. But no one at Gallant sent Olivia that letter, and no one will tell her what haunts her cousin's dreams, what happened to her mother, or what lies on the other side of the wall. Did the shadows call Olivia home? What will they ask her in return? So that sounds really cool and I'm very excited to read this. Next I have Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover. So this one's gonna be interesting. I didn't really enjoy um, It Ends With Us by her. And years ago, I read another one of her books and I remember not really loving that one either. But all the hype around this book got me and not gonna lie, the shiny, pretty cover also got me. Let me just read the back of this real quick so we can see what this one's about. After serving five years in prison for a tragic mistake, Kenna Rowan returns to the town where it all went wrong, hoping to reunite with her four-year-old daughter. But the bridges Kenna burned are proving impossible to rebuild. Everyone in her daughter's life is determined to shut Kenna out, no matter how hard she works to prove herself. The only person who hasn't closed the door on her completely is Ledger Ward, a local bar owner and one of the few remaining links to Kenna's daughter. But if anyone were to discover how Ledger is slowly becoming an important part of Kenna's life, both would risk losing the trust of everyone important to them. The two form a connection despite the pressure surrounding them, but as their romance grows, so does the risk. Kenna must find a way to absolve the mistakes of her past in order to build a future out of hope and healing. So yeah, this does sound really interesting and I just hope that I like how Colleen Hoover writes about it. Next, I have A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. So I read the first one and I didn't really like it, but everybody has told me that this is the best one and that I just have to give it another try. So that's what I will be doing by reading this book. And I'm not gonna read the back of this one because it is the second in the series and I don't wanna give away any spoilers. So yeah. The next one I am so excited to read, and that is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This one is supposed to be similar to the movie Knives Out, which I absolutely loved. And if the book is anything like it, I'm sure I'm going to love this book. Let me just read what this one is supposed to be about. It says, Avery Grahams has a plan for a better future. Survive high school, win a scholarship, and get out. But her luck changes in an instant when billionaire Tobias Hawthorne dies and leaves her virtually his entire fortune. The only catch? Avery must move into his sprawling mansion, full of secret passages, riddles, and codes. Unfortunately for Avery, Hawthorne House is also occupied by the family that Tobias Hawthorne just disinherited. This includes the four Hawthorne grandsons, dangerous magnetic boys who grew up with every expectation that one day they would inherit billions. Heir apparent Grayson Hawthorne is convinced that Avery must be a con woman, and he's determined to take her down. But his brother Jameson views her as their grandfather's last hurrah, a twisted riddle, a puzzle to be solved. Caught in a world of wealth and privilege with danger around every turn, Avery will have to play the game herself just to survive this twisty, thrilling new mystery. I am so excited to read this. Next I have Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I'm just excited to read this because so far I've loved every single one of her books that I've read. Um, yeah, so I'm just excited because I know it's probably gonna be really good. It says that this book is supposed to be based in Malibu, August 1983. So this one actually has a really long synopsis and I don't want to bore you. So I'm pretty sure that this book is about a like famous family in Malibu back in the day. It sounds pretty interesting and definitely like something 
Taylor Jenkins Reid would write about. Next up, I have The Paris Apartment by Lucy Fowley. And this is one of my most anticipated books, so I'm super excited to read this soon. And it was my book of the month pick for March. So this book actually has a much shorter synopsis, so I can read this one real quick. It says, Jess needs a fresh start. She's broke and alone, and she's just left her job under less than ideal circumstances. Her half-brother Ben didn't sound thrilled when she asked if she could crash with him for a bit, but he didn't say no. And surely everything will look better from Paris. Only when she shows up to find a very nice apartment could Ben really have afforded this? He's not there. The longer Ben stays missing, the more Jess starts to dig into her brother's situation, and the more questions she has. Ben's neighbors are an eclectic bunch and not particularly friendly. Jess may have come to Paris to escape her past, but it's starting to look like Ben's future that's in doubt. Everyone's a neighbor, everyone's a suspect, and everyone knows something they're not telling. That sounds really good. I really enjoyed the guest list, so I'm excited to read another one of her books as well. The last book I picked out is We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang. And this was another book of the month book I picked. I think I actually did this as a add-on to one of my boxes, but um, it just sounded really interesting, so I picked it up. The synopsis for this one says, When 29-year-old Sunday Brennan wakes up in a Los Angeles hospital, bruised and battered after a drunk driving accident, she swallows her pride and goes home to her family in New York. But it's not easy. She deserted them all and her high school sweetheart. Five years before, with little explanation, and they've got questions. Sunday is determined to rebuild her life back on the East Coast, even if it does mean tiptoeing around resentful brothers and an ex-fiance. The longer she stays, however, the more she realizes they need her just as much as she needs them. When a dangerous man from her past brings her family's pub business to the brink of financial ruin, the only way to protect the Brennans is to upend all their secrets. Secrets that have damaged the family for generations and will threaten everything they know about their lives. In the aftermath, the Brennans are forced to confront painful mistakes and ultimately find a way forward together. So those are all the books I hope to read sometime this spring. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed, please subscribe and maybe give this video a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you and see you next time.